and welcome to the dance, the final, the ultimate conclusion of this tournament. In the north side, hailing from France, it's Scotch, one half of Gold Path 2 with his teammate Nagano of Russia. They are the allies and in the south, as we uncover fog of war, we find Von Aston and Asilda. We are prepared for war. Our Casters for today are Stormless and Tightrope, two venerable experts and veterans of the casting as part of this community. And Twitch chat is ready to go. If you're watching on YouTube, you're ready to see the battle unfold because three, two, one, we are now officially live in game one. Thank you very much, AE, for that lovely handover from undoubtedly the, the best MC in Company of Heroes ever. And uh, that's right, game one of the grand finals. And uh, couldn't think of two better teams. I, I feel like we've cast this a lot of times before. Gold Path 2. Yeah, they've got great teammates with uh, Von Aston and Isildur. Isildur, of course, straight away into special operations. Infantry Strategy locked down. How are you feeling, Tightrope? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Interesting, we're starting out on Crossing in the Woods this time. Haven't seen this mm. for a wee while. It's an interesting map, isn't it, for a finals? This is a, a very tight map. Uh, you've got a lot of, like, you know, very... Well, I don't want to say narrow choke points, but the, the center is just, you know, very, very clustered, especially when you're trying to move left and right. You've got a nice wide open map, at least, with the VPs there, but... Really, you know, when those tanks come in at the late game, it's not easy to it's not easy to move around on this map. It's, a, it's an interesting, interesting finals choice. Yeah, I thought originally this was going to be like the game five map, but looks like they're going to play two matches on it. Oh well, first engagement's going on. Tommy's soft retreating. Also got some fighting over on the other house. The engineers battling it out. Very slow engagement though. It is, yeah. And, uh, Scotch has uh, absolutely no support over there. I think his intention is quite literally just to stop fuel coming in. Uh, for perhaps 30 seconds or more, <laughs> maybe a minute. But uh, of course, time is a big resource in uh, any strategy game. Von Aston here is going with the uh, Grenadiers to uh, cut the strategic point, and he will run into the sniper if he goes round, but he's actually going to hide. This is great game sense. Oh, he's going to yeah, move. Can he, <laughs> can he get a super early flank on the sniper? That'd be a big pickup. I think he's going around for it. It's... And there's no support there, really. Just the engineers. Grenadiers open up, and uh, they know that sniper is there. Of course, one shot already taken, so the grenadiers need to just... They know exactly where that sniper is. Takes the shot. I think it's safe. Yeah, just kind of dancing along the side of the road. Maybe if he ran down the road, he'd be in trouble, but gets away. Doesn't even take any damage, which is really helpful, because <laughs> you know, if he took, like, half health, then you'll really at risk of your sniper bringing it out for the next engagement. Just on the west hand side there by the western munitions, got uh, Nagano and he's got the universal carrier. Very cleverly just using it to break medium cover on the munitions point and also push the Volks Grenadiers uh, out of their cover position, uh, helping the Tommies get away. So nice early game play with the uh, universal carrier there. Good start for Axis though, really good map control. Yeah, but, I mean, that sniper, <laughs> it's going to cause a lot of territory. That machine gun just can't hold the line there for Von Aston. Universal Carrier has popped the Vickers. And five-man upgrade already for Nagano. Oh, Grenadiers there. They just found that sniper a little bit too far on the front lines there. Not supported by the penal battalions yet. And they do manage to bring it down to half health. That's going to push... Uh, healing out of the Soviet base for sure. And uh, I think actually, you know, if you want to talk about the start of this game, yes, it's a great start for Axis, but allies have gone for the sniper. They were slower to get tier one units out. Um, of course, they will have all the tools necessary now to start pushing that map back. Oh, look at this Rakitin right in front of the UC. Oh, here it goes. That is a so beautiful risky. takedown at the start. Yeah, like running that UC around on half health, you know, it can go down to one Rakitin shot, and he took that risk, and it didn't pay off. 
see on the uh, right VP there. Scotch laying down some mines. Uh, any early units trying to get on that right hand side. Uh, they're not going to be able to. Of course, Von Aston's on that side playing as Austria. So a lot of four man squads. The mines can be devastating and definitely stop that advance. Sniper switching sides now, going over to the left. No healing yet on any of these Tommies though, so can't pester his teammate for some healing on that Sniper. See a scout car in for Von Aston, sensible choice uh, against that Sniper. All he's got to worry about really is mines, and uh, do we see any... He's got the Minesweepers on his Pioneers. And uh, of course, he's just going to need to run up with those, I think, and maybe, maybe have a dive on that sniper. It'd be a pretty big pickup. No, he's got healing and he's just retrieved the sniper back to base, not taking any risks with the Scott play Scotch playing ultra safe. Full retreat, 2 2 2, just chasing away all these Tommies on the left hand side. Oh, the Stern Pioneers, they just missed that mine. Oh, actually, it's their mine. Sorry, I thought it was a Scotch <laughs> mine. I was thinking, this is great. Actually, the, the mine from Scotch is on the right BP, so uh, my apologies there. But um, actually, it's still dangerous because the scout car is actually heading over to that right VP. Dancing around it. Gotta love a bit of a fake hype in these games. Everyone on their toes. It's actually a very interesting build for Von Aston. He went two Grenadiers into the 2 2 2. Usually you can't get away with that, but it shows how strong the Axis start was with that double fuel control. Yeah, he seemingly had nothing for a, a very long time. Uh, Stern Pioneers there. It looks like they're trying to get on top of this sniper. A lot of the models had to turn before firing. Uh, that meant damage didn't go off. Sniper, sniper coming through out. the middle, looking, oh no, to reveal itself. I was going to say, maybe he's going to go for the counter sniper, but reveals it. Yeah, you can't waste that much time, I think. If you, if you keep seeing that Soviet sniper retreating, it's probably best not to waste the fact that you have a sniper as well. Get it, get it uh, firing at some units, picking up those kills, draining the manpower. Scout car here's uh, not got the health to deal with the PTRS penal battalions moving in from the east side at the moment, having to fall back a little. And it's a great turnaround actually from the allies in this game. They were pushed so far back, but they believed in that build they wanted right at the start of the game, and they're starting to make it work. T70 in production for Scotch. So we're going to see that hitting the battlefield shortly. Boom are already on the field though for a seal door, so already going to be able to shut down that T70. And we do have AEC uh, that just came in at the same time from the Ghana. We've seen all these light vehicles hit at the same time. And uh, this is definitely the map, I think, for these light vehicles. You, you need the speed, you need the, the flexibility when the resources are as wide as this. T70, light tank has arrived. Is that T70? Beautiful icy camo, perfect for these summer conditions. <laughs> Pretty good map control right now. Triple cap cooking for the allies and also got double munitions, so they're sitting pretty right now. Gee, yeah, we've got, uh, got most of the commanders locked in. Von Aston going for Jaeger armor doctrine uh, with special operations. Classic combination, really. Uh, with of course the recon that just cannot be cannot be uh, shot down. Uh, the last pick's going to go over to Nagano, and there's uh, some pretty beastly commanders available to him. Yeah, well, really we all know what a beast the <laughs> elephant is on this map. Just can see the entire map, can range the entire map. Very hard to avoid on a relatively small map across the woods. I think they've got the counters for it though, really. You've got Commando Regiment, which has the late game air supremacy. You might get some luck with the, the mortar smoke cover, you know, if you're trying to approach it. Um, but also, you know, Royal Artillery Regiment might be helpful there in just constantly keeping it away. Um, I mean, I think the options are there. 
uh, Nagano is actually dropping, I think, the uh, field artillery down on uh, some of the infantry squads on the Eastern Munitions. Yeah, <laughs> with any luck, it might get rid of that mine that's uh, lingering. If he hits it now, that would be terrible. In fact, it's a little bit risky leaving those units, though. And we went in for a light dive on the sniper, didn't get the kill, and had to kite out of there, away from the penal squad. Oh, and now that sniper also has to retreat. <laughs> sniper definitely just took a PTRS to the shoulder and and walked through it. Uh, that's the kind of infantry you want on the front lines. Oh, this could be a wipe in the middle, looking for a kill on this one model fault screen here. Focus fire on the road, and he gets it. Beautiful pickup. Beautiful pickup. Nagano and Scotch, they're just masterminds at picking the right opportunities to do this kind of thing. And uh, Von Aston and Asilda, they've got sizable armies. In fact, a lot of it's even healed, uh, healed. But they're still not finding the way to stop this uh, this push. And Nagano and Scotch, they're just working side by side. They're communicating Oh, he's going in for other. the kill on the Puma. Attack ground, and down That's it cool. goes. Oh, oh there's a great Rakitten counter pickup from, from the Raketten. Sildor, beautiful. Still, I think you're pretty happy with that trade as Nagano, because the Puma seems to scale better into the late game than the AC does. Uh, you see, I've always argued this because of the uh, the stun ability that the AEC has. I think that's an, uh, an amazing tool for the late game, especially if you're looking at um, you know some of, some of the bigger tanks. It's it's a long stun. Yeah, well, the Puma just <laughs> it's got bit. I feel like it's got better virulency, and it also has like the uh, target weak point like ability. Both are good. And, yeah, and it gives a lot more time now for the T70 to just roam the field as well, not having to deal with that Puma. Only got one kill on that T-70 so far though, that's quite unusual, considering how long it's been on the field. I think he's, uh, I think he's been unlucky. Most of that push at the uh, last minute or so was done by infantry. We just see on the, the right side, scout car actually delivering blows to the mines which are being brought up by the pioneer squads from Von Aston so I think he knows he can't really push out it's going to be slow let's see the pioneers to scout the mines first then move up Scary rounds on there from Von Aston has just come up so I think uh, Von Aston here is probably going to be scouting a little bit of... It's actually not looking in the base. This is uh, entirely in the area behind the VP on the right. So perhaps looking where the sniper is. Pack still alive, forcing away the T-70. But Penal's coming around the side. Might be able to get the kill on the pack here. And do. <laughs> and then go for the satchel. <laughs> the MG guy was reloading. And uh, that just gave enough time without suppression to get that satchel off. The AT gun is down, so Von Aston will have to spend uh, manpower to, to build that again. It's a big blow. Yeah, really yeah, good stuff here. here. Sorry, Tyro. No, okay, <laughs> you go here. <laughs> I was going to say the uh, recon. Uh, has spotted the sniper location, so uh, Von Aston knows where it is, knows it's still in the field. He's getting his sniper into a position right now for it, and I think actually this is dangerous. Fortunately, the uh, Scotch sniper just moved out of the way, and he may have been able to snipe if he'd stayed where he was. The Stuka in the, the southwest. Oh, <laughs> that's a whole squad of Tommies down. With a beautiful first hit from the Stuka. But he did lose an MG34 and it looks like these engineers going for the steel. No. He's going to pick it up with the Tommies. Not going to muck around. Good walking Stuka barrage though. Good first barrage. Yeah, that, that squad wasn't even bunched up. So that was a really, 
a really big hit. Just seeing Stone Pioneers from Isildur, they're, they're constantly getting this Mines notification pinged uh, on his feed. So, um, it's kind of scary. <laughs> Guys, just do me a favour, would you stop oh, sharing you your webcams with me? Try again. Be is, is it me or is it Dan? It, it's better now. You were, you turned into robots momentarily, but uh, sounds good again now. No worries. Did it did it refresh itself? Let's go again. <laughs> yep. Here we go. Here we go. Sorry about that. Whilst we uh, reconfigure configure some of the audio. T70 here in a little bit of trouble. Tried to flank around the back of the MG42. Uh, took a Faust from the Grenadiers, and now the Scout car is trying to push it on. Incendiary rounds as well helped to finish it off play sniper there is still waiting to counter snipe scotches uh sniper bit of a flank coming in here from scotch manages to wrestle control of that building force the mg out with the threat of the satchel didn't quite have the munitions for it but just the threat was enough and full retreat for von Aston. might even be able to get the sniper if he's super lucky here Nope. <laughs> Actually, this is a, I feel like it's going to be difficult for Scotch now. He invested in two of the PTRS squads, so his anti-infantry capabilities really rely with the shocks and the, the engineers now, and I, I don't think it's enough against this uh, three grand sniper, two MGs. Uh, I think actually well, he's going to find himself... Actually, just went down for Nagano on the munitions on the other side. So one squad of them down for Nagano. We're definitely coming into a, an Axis phase right now. Stuka firing up through the center. It's right on top of one of the uh, the Vickers machine guns. And it's going to force that retreat. Yeah, Axis pushing back strongly right now. Back and forth on this map. Nice rifle grenade. And uh, Nagano, meanwhile, they're actually pushing back unopposed on the left-hand side, getting a lot of territory right now. I think this is going to be relatively short-lived with the Volksgrenadiers and the Stone Pioneers there. There really isn't any support. Nagano seems to be going now through the middle, so uh, that side probably not going to be long-lasting. Uh, interestingly, though, I, I don't think Axis got as much out of that counter-push as I think they should have done. I think they may have even lost territory <laughs> from, a, from a great position to uh, to start moving out. Oh, oh tier four sniper. is uh, down. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Von Aston there trying to chase with the scout car over the sniper. There's a mine and an AT gun that takes that down. And I think uh, the scout car, you know, is so important because we talk, again, it's the Jaeger armor doctrine pick. And uh, having the scope in the scout car is very good for sight. And bring that elephant out. Mm. Gano pushing through the middle with this Tommy squad. He has upgraded grenades with these Tommies, giving them a lot more fighting power. They can kind of fight back against the Fox Treaties, go grenade for grenade. Might even get the wipe if he's lucky. Oh, on the road. Close call for a silver. Allies with strong control right now. Double fuel. Triple cap as well. It's really surprising to, to see this because uh axis were in such an amazing position like a, a minute ago and it just nothing nothing really happened with it in fact uh nagano and scotch just held that so well now look at the map control like you say the three stars at the moment the it, it's a lot stuke is ready to go and get uh, tier three going up for von aston so we might start to see those medium vehicles come out which might make the difference but uh, just arriving on the field fresh in for nagano is of course the cromwell and uh, that's going to be a big change. It's got a, a nice window of opportunity to uh, just mess up the front lines a little more and allow allies to 
Got some frontline defenses there. Gonna run straight past this for a kitten. <laughs> and force it to retreat. <laughs> So it does have two Rakitans, so it can fight it off somewhat, but still around 50 fuel away from the Command Panther, so this Cromwell's got a bit of time to get some damage done. The Stuka lining up for another barrage. Okay, metal might... Yeah, it does get the AT gun for a little bit of damage on the tail end. Nice barrage there. Not using re uh, artillery flares for these either, just raw guesses. The work being done by uh, Scotch's sniper on the right here is uh, is beautiful. There's a real sniper battle going on between the two players, Von Aston and Scotch there, and they're constantly engaging with each other. It's going to be uh, kind of intense micro. By the way, west, uh, sorry, west side, yes, uh, Panzer IV just went over a mine. And the Cromwell is right there to engage it. First shot pings. Uh, is he going to chase? You always have to worry about those Rakidans. Oh, they're dropping the flame mortar support and he's going in for the chase. Before missing. And Cromwell penetrates twice in a row. That's a huge hit. There is a... Oh, a and the smoke there, the shell. Smoke shell. Beautiful smoke shell. Cromwell can go in. I think he's using ground attack here. And it's going to penetrate. Panzer IV is down. Beautiful play. Can we see a ground attack from Aston? Max range here. Oh. And it just misses. That was so well played from Nagano. Incredible Cromwell play. Yeah, magical really. The Raketten and the Pack 40 were there, uh, which potentially could have saved that uh, Panzer IV. But it was so well managed. Meanwhile, Scotch has brought out the IS-2. So there's now a huge tank presence, which is just unrivaled on the field for allies. Yeah, Command Panther's still 10 fuel off, but he's not too far away from it, honestly. So just have to wait until then. Snipers have just been like standing right next to each other for so much of this, but pretty much dead even on kills as well. I think it's 21 versus 25. Yeah, they've been very active. Uh, neither player has been uh, afraid to use them at any point. Stuka, we can hear, is firing now on the West munitions. And that uh, is oh. going to catch that AT gun. Double D crew, that's a great walking Stuka barrage. And I guess a kill on it with the Rakitin as well. Nicely done by a Sildor. Can he move up and take that second one? He knows it's decrewed. Oh my Ooh, god, hit. I have two nice too. three hits. <laughs> Can we see this rifle oh. grenade from the uh, grenadiers on the right? The clumped up, uh, clumped up penguin squad there. And they've got to uh, remove all the support for the IS-2, I think. Double pack 40s, uh, just ready to hit. I think one of them did actually penetrate rear armor then. So Sparrow's coming in on the MG42. Knocks out one model. I guess Knocks one out of another. It's a way. All packs moving into position on the ice. Two rear armor exposed. A lot of damage. Big hits. Uh, I guess one of the, the advantages that uh, Axis has here, the Ice 2 is very slow. If you bring the health down, it's also slow to repair, so they may have some luck working around the Ice 2. This is an almighty push from Nagano through the middle. Four five man sections going to work. Without any suppression here, these fortunately is having trouble holding the line. Mom Panther just enters the field. Yeah, south, and uh, it's not going to be enough, but it will push back the infantry. It will uh, help retain some of the control. Vet 3 Stern Pioneers there. I don't think he noticed in time. He's still got a late retreat there. The models are low health now. Last shot needed. 
just gets around the tree line in time as the stoop is coming through the center. Well dodged. Command Panther pushing through the middle, but no, six pounder, there to fend it off. I think the sniper has the range at the moment for the IS-2. It's actually got the range to counter snipe. That was very close. The sniper's giving out fantastic range. Really, actually, if you look to see the fog of war on that, you'd see uh, the sniper is just essential on the map right now. And that's now for these long range headshots. Range shots. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is Man, great. Uh, with the pack 40, uh, the double vet, I mean, we can see that target weak point. A stun with those two pack 40s there would be lethal. I have to say, the axes are getting very low in the VP game. 160 already. They really need to pay attention to the victory points. Mm. Claim more support coming in on the middle. <laughs> Just really wants to deny that capture, but looks like the fortunities are going to be able to squeeze in on the side of it. Still get neutralized at least. Oh, this is nice now with the Command Panther here. Raketten gets a nice shot on the Cromwell. And uh, as it chases, that Command Panther will be there to just... Make sure there's no devastating pushes. No wipes of the Raketten. Look at how far forwards Von Essen's sniper is right now. He's really going counter snipe hunting, but Scotches is in a very defensive position. I agree it's a good moment to look at the stats for the guys that always complain we don't do this enough. Um, there's the overview in the middle of the game. You can see the KDs and the damage dealt. In terms of graphs, the two graphs that matter. Army value showing what an equal and fair game this is, and uh, points held. And uh, we go back live with the action. I feel like we should have a. This is an important message from A. E. <laughs> <laughs> well, eyes two back up to full, looking to do some more damage. Oh, and Stuka coming in again. Ooh, no dodge at all. The sniper actually nearly got hit by that. Uh, the Stuka play has been really, uh, really on point in this game. Von Aston, by the way, it looks like he's really just saving up for the elephant right now. It should be coming out in just uh, a second. In fact, there we are, elephant now on the field. That's going to be the answer to uh, things like the Cromwell and the IS-2 especially. And uh, with that on the field, as long as they can get on some VPs, I think they'll actually find themselves in a pretty good spot. Speaking of the Cromwell, just evading the Command Panther, getting away on one shot there. But yeah, that elephant. <laughs> oh man, it's just such a huge obstacle on this map. It's so hard to avoid it. Just a slight from long range against all of these medium tanks. And the big boys too. Well, they've, they've left themselves with no counter that I can really see. Uh, they've not got the off-map artillery. Uh, you know, I don't even think really they've got the recon for this. Uh, this the Vetu sniper for Austria is just essential to keep alive right now because you can see the, the the vision range they get. Oh, he's moving forwards for the counter snipe. The recon plane providing some sight. Scotch sniper pulling back just in the nick of time though. Good awareness from him. Now the Axis with the triple cap turning things around, that arrival of the Elephant really steadying the ship. IS-2 seems to want to engage in the center, so that's... Uh... <gasps> Did that plane crash just kill three Green Deer models there? That is unfortunate for Von Aston. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky he didn't lose the whole squad, I suppose. <laughs> but I'm sure he's going to be cursing his luck rather than thanking his lucky stars. Oh. Satchel on the elephant. Let's slow it down. Nothing really available to chase though, and it's in quite a defensive position. Oh! <laughs> Stuka on 
the center VP wipes the penal battalion capping. That was a beautiful hit. No chance to respond in time. Reconnaissance flight set to go. Fit two with that barrage as well. That's the magic number for the walking stick. They're going to be firing off those shots even more rapidly now. Oh, nice Rakitin positioning, forcing away the Firefly there. An elephant already back up to full. Posing its will through the center. I think that's a uh, veteran C2 on the Pioneers there. Improved repair time is uh, so good for those late game tanks. On the uh, northwestern side, command oh. uh, amidst falling <laughs> planes everywhere. That one grazing the Rakit and taking out two models. <laughs> I don't know, it wouldn't Choose be the same for you, but I'm pretty sure the pilot just fell down now uh, on my screen. Well, the allies are going to have to leave. Sorry? I was going to say, from this position, I, I think it's relatively easy for Axis, as long as they really just zone in on the two VPs even and just hold those and I think they've got a fairly easy game ahead of them. The AVRE is coming in now on the middle point and uh, Panther there, we're going to see Mark target. But... Ooh, it's yeah, in big will. trouble. That's a bad move. That's a really bad move and it's down. Beautiful play by Axis. Not the best play by Nagano. <laughs> Uh, that was a reckless aviary. He was relying on the stun hitting the elephant so he could escape, but didn't quite range it. Sendry artillery on the MG in the middle. It's a way, though. You know, interesting, we've got this Katusha in the base for Scotch, I've not seen much of in this game. And it has yeah, fired some one barrage. One. Yeah. yeah, grazed the packs, but didn't really do too much. Could have this on that dodge from Nagano. I really like what Sildor's doing right now. Uh, in fact, just to keep that sniper away and just running the uh, the infantry up the map. Beautiful stun grenade from the Stern Pioneers uh, on the Tommies. And uh, they're now forced away. The center is capped, not secure. The right side, very unguarded at the moment. I think that's where Scotch is about to bring the, uh, the IS-2 back again. Just this recon plane allowing that elephant to get three hits all the way almost to the base there. How are they going to deal with this elephant? That's the big question for the allies right now. They might just try to go for a VP one, try to drain out those last 150 VPs. Because mm. it's just such a tough nut to crack. I think that's the... The deal with uh, heavies on this map is you, you, they're going to have to use the shock troops for smoke. I think that's probably going to be the big one. Uh, flanking is very, very difficult. They're just going to have to utilize the wideness uh, of the map and just try and cap the VPs around. But they've got the command panther there. That's why this is such a good strategy. Oh, connecting with the trees there. One Ivan's worst enemy. <laughs> I was just unable to make many inroads now. Elephant locking them out. Is that elephant going for ground attack? That's a beautiful line there he's picking. I think he probably has the end of the, the recon site to rely on and nearly got a hit on the Firefly. I'm wondering if the Katusha killed the sniper because I don't see any sniper for Von Essen anymore. wonder if that's what it was, the one kill that it had initially when it came on. <laughs> yeah, it might have been, honestly. <laughs> oh, from the falling plane, somebody says in chat. My god, that is very unfortunate <laughs> for Von Aston. Oh no.
beautiful rifle grenade from Grenadiers on the uh, Eastern Munitions there, wiping the engineers. We've got two Stukas on the map now from uh, East Sealdor, which has been causing a lot of problems, just the one. Two's going to be devastating. There's a Panzerwerfer from Von Aston that's moving up right now. It's going to fire, and I, they have the eyes on the sniper, so... Let's see if it hits. Trying to plant it on the retreat to the base. Scotch knew better. Shock troops in here doing some really good damage. D crew one pack, but he not getting suppressed. Huh. That plane hit anything? I don't see any corpses next to it. Where is this Cromwell going in the center tightrope? This is a, oh, a really strange dive. Hunting. A really strange dive. The Command Panther's there. The Cromwell, maybe? What is it going around to, to, for scouting? He really wants that walking streak or the with it. He's going to go for it. The turret didn't turn in time. My Lord, been lost. Oh, that is heartbreaking for Nagano. <laughs> nice attempt, but oh, man, that is hard to see. All those <laughs> rocket artillery pieces carrying in the corner managed to escape death. I think that's great, though, you know, to see the uh, Axis players. They know what they, they know exactly what's going on. They know that this Cromwell's going to come around sooner or later. So they immediately have uh, that shift command just to bring all their artillery to the back of the base. And that being said, though, Panzerwerfer are a bit Could dangerous. Firefly. Oh, Rakid misses the killing blow. Very close call, though. Allies have caused a bit of disarray here, you know, they're getting on top of the VPs, they have drained around 30 recently from the Axis, so they're getting something done despite losing, you know, some critical pieces in the AVRE and the Cromwell. Mm. Well, their, their key strength here, I think, is actually just their focus on the VPs, which has been uh, phenomenal. Uh, the way that Nagano pushes forward with the infantry, leaving one to cap, you know, is just beautiful. It means he can cap effortlessly. And, uh, I think Axis are in that kind of danger zone of not knowing how to respond, perhaps not communicating. Okay, look, we just sit on two VPs until this is locked down. Uh, but they're not. They're still splitting up. And uh, that's perhaps making it a bit easier for the Allies to keep this dominance. Yeah, the Allies are doing a really good job going from side to side forcing the elephant to rotate constantly it's just not finding the targets right now just heard the 100 vps caller and uh, you know it's desperate actually when the command panther really has to go and push models out of the vps uh, there's really a, a lack of infantry presence plenty of infantry back in the base really uh just look in the access base at the moment uh, these units need to be on the field. I think at the moment they're trying to shear healing. They've just got one healing bunker. It's kind of slowing them down a little bit. They're supposed to be salvaging that Cromwell. and the free fuel that the Nagano has gifted them. <laughs> Let's get going. Looking for the MG kill. A lot of scatter though at that range. Duka also not doing too much there. Okay, this looks now like Axis are maybe trying to focus on the right and the center. The Rakettans are there focused on the left side uh, of that VP across the river. Of course, you've got the Elephant ready to deal with the uh, with the IS-2. Vision from the Pioneers means we'll see that hit from the Elephant now. Pioneers, of course, keeping the cap on the VP. Center, we've got the Grenadiers flushing out the Maxims with rifle grenades. They will see that the Come fireflies... The fireflies. Oof. Big, big, big damage in return. It's hoping for some tulip rocket action there. Maybe, you know, double stun on <laughs> the elephant, but nothing happening. These Rakettans, though. Rakettans are going to be lying in wait for when those Fireflies uh, come back in again. Yeah, they're sneaking so deep. They might even find the Katusha if they're lucky. Way back in base currently, but next time it comes out for a barrage. Oh my god, they are so deep into enemy territory. Yeah, they're going to get the Katusha. I'm pretty sure he's set up as well. Here he comes. Surely. 
<laughs> that was beautiful. I don't know if you know the Stuka was timed to hit the shock troops, so there's a clear retreat path now for those Rakettans. That was master level OKW play there. Those Rakettans are just so sneaky. To say though we still don't see control of the vps uh, for axis and that's a big problem 75 vps just been called they've got all the tools yeah they are just really struggling to hold on to the points Worth for missing again. I think that's its third barrage, only six kills, not really stacking up. To build a Panzerwerfer just to counter that sniper, I think definitely is an insight into how frustrating that unit has been for Von Aston. The Allies and, again uh, doing the capping. Axis really in big trouble now. Yeah, if, if they don't group together and hit two VPs hard, I think they will have lost this game. They're running out of time to to make these decisions. I think the Command Panther is now going for the Sniper. They might... <laughs> right in seeing this, this is dangerous. Roomba up in support. Command Panther going in, looking for the kill on these Fireflies. One more shot. Oh, and it misses a killing blow. Rumbi also taking heavy damage. Getting away. Oh my god, stun from the elephant. Big, big hit. Target weak point used. That should allow the elephant to get up there and get another shot. There might be rear armor as well by this time. But the elephant is charging in. <laughs> yeah, one more shot and then is going down. But in the face of double AT guns, he pulls back. Conservative play. Garner has brought in the uh, second AVRE into this game, and uh, Rakettans, I think, are probably going to have to get out of there. In fact, they're not budging. Uh oh. It's going to be one down. Super coming in. Pretty good dodges, though. Scotts is really doing well in the dodge. Another one coming in, though. Oh, not so lucky. Six pounder goes down. Center VP, you've got uh, one model on the Volks Grenadiers. Plenty of models firing, but uh, fortunately, medium cover on the craters, I think, may have saved that. Again, you know, Axis, they've got the VP on the right. I'm pretty sure that's uh, well locked down now. They've got plenty of indirect fire. They've got the elephant. Uh, they, of course, just have to get on that center oh. VP. Was anything crewing that MG34 middle? Did another yeah. thing just go down to a plane yeah, crash? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's horrible luck for the Axis. Claims the third party in this match. It's an entirely valid strategy. Uh, recon planes, of course, with their ultimate function. And I don't know, the Allies getting the capping done here. Axis not really pushing me out with anything. I think they might drain out before they even get back onto the VPs here. It's a bit too sleepy for game one, I feel. Uh, <laughs> they've really got to pick up the, the, the pace. Uh, definitely, you know. Oh, another Ooh. big hit from the Stuka, sorry, on the right VP. The point yeah. is being overrun. Continue that point. But I, I don't feel like they are responding enough. Actually, Nagano and Scotch always have something there, you know, pretty much near the front line at least. And... Uh, I haven't seen that from Axis. They just seem to leave a couple of minutes. And then, uh, bring everything back up again. Kind of like a war of attrition at the moment. Will the Allies drain off the VPs or will the rocket artillery just bleed the Allies dry before they can get the job done? Oh, really deep whiffer. Oh, takes out a lot of combat engineers. Very coming forwards. Take some elephant fire though. Oh, a lot of damage from the elephant. Wow. 
Yeah, especially uh, we've got another sniper built sniper. for Von Aston. And uh, actually potential counter snipes there, but I think he's using it for the vision for the elephant. It's so powerful. Oh, Scotch's sniper coming all the way forward here. This could be the cow snipe moment. Reveals itself. On there Aston. it is! Well played. Scotch was a little bit comfortable, wasn't expecting it, and Von Essen strikes at just the right time. It's really nice. It's going to give that sniper more scouting flexibility. Uh, the elephant, I really like Veteran C2. It's about to hit Veteran C3 soon, and uh, I'm actually surprised they're not able to do more on the map right now. But Axis getting stronger and stronger. We may see a triple cap if they can just push the Tommies back in the west. Oh, kitten on top of Firefly. We'll sing it away. Looks like Ally's maybe going to come for a double team on the other side of the map now. Eyes 2 switching sides. And this Broombeer pushing all the way through the middle, but double AT guns there to repel. Looks like they're going to take some rocket fire. Ooh, that was a good one. Three moles off each. And four oh, walking Stuka on the other side too. <laughs> mortar shell coming in, Patap mortar from the AVRE, heavy artillery both directions. I think that that push may have just turned the game for Axis there. Uh, that was quite devastating for allies. Nothing in this game has been able to contend with the elephant. They don't have the commander picks really to, to do anything about it. They don't even have the speed on their vehicles. They're relying on range to try and deal with something that excels at ranged engagements. And uh, I think now the Axis have built up. Uh, they've probably got this game in the bag right at the last minute. 34 VPs though, Stormless. That's not a lot to work with. One good push from uh, the Allies and that could be it. That is true. Yeah, if they, if they really focus on it and jump the VPs, they'll win. But uh, hopefully the Axis know that the situation they're in right now. Like, don't overextend themselves don't, don't push the boat too much because uh, it's a really nice comeback if they pull it off oh, AVRE back up ready to fire it's that worth it like going deep again <laughs> come on AUT yeah that must be going rocket RT hunting Artillery just continually raining down. Such a toll that takes on you, constantly having to dodge. Well, Firefly's forcing away the Command Panther. Could this open the door for a good push from Nagano from the left hand side? Oh! Gets an abandon on the Stuka. That was a huge shot. I don't even know if that was meant to be there. Maybe an overshot. That was huge. Unfortunately, the Stuka is abandoned. But the Command Panther oh, the goes command down as well. Ten. Incendiary grenades going in, that'll make it hard for the sniper to retreat. Everything's in chaos right now. The Stuka's taken down. Panzerwerf is having Elephant's to get out of there. In. Elephant's there to meet them, though. They decide to pull back. Still job There's done, come up, Panther. Yeah. Roof into the middle. Oh, going after the blob instead of going for the VPs there. Could this I, be the moment? I did not expect that at all, Type like, Somehow the Allies have capitalized on nothing and uh, thrown this into a beautiful uh, counter-attack from a strong Axis position. Do you know what it was? It was the extra sight they had from that command vehicle recon plane. Right. Gano used that and got some really good long-range snipes from the Fireflies. Busting barrage coming in on these AT guns. AECs. Oh, it's going in. Two of them, in fact. I'm walking Stuka hunting. Just uh, check out these AECs on the uh, southwest. They're coming around for a big flank. And they're going to dive into the base. The Stuka is there. 
A lot of troops here though for Sildor, if he can get the snares off. This is <laughs> oh, just getting bopped by the elephant. No love, but look at this AVRE! That's a massive blob! Four VPs left. I think we know where this game is going. Uh, very good game. Constant pushes back and forth, but it looks like Nagano and Scotch Gold Path 2 are going to clear that game one very confidently. GG. This is the 2 versus 2 Masters Cup. There was so much going on there. Awesome. It was a massive game, that. Oh my lord, how much action as day has turned to night and storms um room. The mood has turned for Von Assen and Isilda, um, and it is soured, especially when we know now, thanks to the aircraft investigation in chat, that it must have been the aircraft that killed the sniper. Um, so what, what an insane game. 48 minutes, 56 se seconds of scintillating action. Um, fantastic game one to start off this grand final. Yeah, really good. Um, definitely like issues in that game with I think commander choices. I want to say, um, but actually they held it really well. I, I thought the Ghana and Scotch would surely lose on the fact they could barely counter that elephant, um, but they did it. They actually did it, and I think that goes to show that that's why they're top players. You know, they can yeah. really change any situation around with or without the tools. That you would deem, you know, that you would advise people use this in this situation, use this. That is phenomenal. That, that it, not good. having to talk, I was able to process a little bit of the, some of the finer details we saw them do. I mean, in the early games, you remember that um, the sniper of Scotch was on the west side, and there was a Tommy section behind the house. What they were trying to bait was the stern pioneers pushing up to go in the house. And as soon as they, they took the sniper bait, the Tommies jumped into the house to deny the stern pioneers, leaving them in the open to allow the sniper, the Soviet sniper, to take a shot. And then the Tommies took another shot and took another model. And I was like, what is this craziness? These guys actually train as, uh, like professionally for this game because Scotch on the east side of Soviets was like some of the best sniper play I've ever seen. I don't know how many uh, rocket artillery um, shots he dodged. Another finer point I was able to pick up on was... Uh, um, obviously it looked like a miss at first but with the Panzerwerfer but Scotch literally walked into it then thought hang on he's probably bluffing me here onto the retreat so he started to walk into the direction of the, the, the rocket artillery with his sniper so it's like a double bluff and that was the kind of stuff and they kept that kind of standard of play going all the way up into the double AEC attack which was just um, pants on head uh, silly but, <laughs> but but it was an elite standard of play and fantastic game. Oh, but yeah, let's let's get over to the uh, stat screen and show off a little bit of what we uh, saw in this game. The final stats as they stand. Um, you can see that Nagano just OP, fifty um, k damage. But von Aston had a fantastic game in the as as Wehrmacht um, with sixty seven k damage um, and, and still losing that game. He's got to be pretty. Uh, sour going into game two um, but hopefully for him and his teammate Isilda they both keep it together um, because uh, they they don't want to be facing down the barrel of a 2-0 defeat they have to pull off the impossible stormless and tightrope they have to win as allies against the greatest two versus two team of all time um, it's almost as though I heard this analogy on YouTube yesterday it's like tennis playing as axis on an axis favorite map is your serve if you get broken on your serve which is what's just happened to Ilsilla and Von Aston. You're in a bad state of mind. You know, you've got to now break back. You've got to do the underdog story yourself. Um, and just to go through a few other stats as well, we've got Scotch um, with his penal battalion, of course, being the best thing he fielded. His infantry play is impeccable. You've got Nagano with um, just just doing fantastically as well with his, with his infantry. Isilda, um, folks are already a stern pioneers, nothing too special there. And then Von Aston, of course, with the Elephant. Oh my god, that damage dealt. I'd be happy if that if I was playing a 4v4. That's 27,600 damage just with the Elephant. Only killing two vehicles, but certainly um, just what an epic game. Um, briefly, we'll just show this, the army values. There's Scotch, Nagano, Silda uh, with the dive there at the end of Von Aston. It was a Silda that got mopped up, unfortunately, for him. And then the only one that's uh, really, well, show resource float, but that kind of gets exacerbated in the late game. You see Scotch and uh, 
build a hip hop cap, and then points hell, just showing how epic that game was and how how up for play it was at many points in time. And there we go. There's game one. Wow. I, I just want to commend, by the way, Von Aston's uh, recon play in that game, trying to pick out that sniper constantly. Um, do you know what I mean? That's like a lot of uh, resources utilized into that, but um, it's a shame he didn't get so much out of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was always in the right place. It was always kind of highlighting whether he could push where the sniper was. Um, Scott was just like equally good, though. He recognized the mm. recon plane and just pulled back every time, you know? It's <laughs> so evenly it matched. The, 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 the cool thing is, like, he, he's hearing it. He's hearing the recon plane. He's going, okay, I know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's a good game. You're, a, you, you, you make a good point about uh, access on this map um you know and, and there's so much indirect fire on on crossing in the woods you know mm. and uh it seems like the access i think get that quicker uh it's also the direction the directional ability can make it far more devastating so uh, it's a tough game for them this uh this second game is is gonna be a steep hill I mean, one thing i can say for von Assen and assault but even if they do go 2-0 down which is probably um the odds on you know was on favorite thing to happen at this point in time um even if they do they went all five games yesterday um with comebacks involved so um they, they proved that they can be a top rate team against Brosras and artovic and all five games of a best of five so you know this this series has legs even if in this next game even if the what you expect to see happen happens and we don't see the unexpected which still could happen by the way um, this series is going to be, turn out to be an epic confrontation, I'm really starting to believe. Um, one thing we do have to do is, it's a little bit biased now, but I forgot to, to share with you guys the polls. <laughs> We've only seen one game, don't forget. But um, first of all, this poll is vote with your head, who do you think is going to win? So we know who's going to win that one now. And then we've got vote with your heart, which is a little bit more subjective. We just want to hear who you want to win. So it's a, it's a... An exercise in objectivity and then an exercise in favoritism and bias. Two polls for you then. We'll, we'll reveal the results of that in five minutes time because we're going away for five minutes. So uh, catch you guys in five minutes and we'll be back with game two. Um, don't go anywhere. I know you won't.